There's an African proverb that says, kindness is a language which the blind can see and the deaf can hear. This podcast is all about authentic conversations. It's all about growth, love, respect, success, mind, body, and spirit. If you're looking to grow and expand in your life and become your authentic self, this is the podcast for you. Welcome back to the show, you guys. Welcome back to Authentic Talks. I am your host. And guess what? I have a surprise for you guys. I have a co-host in the house today. Please welcome Scott back to the show. Hey, thank you. I'm glad to be back. I'm happy to have you too. We also have another guest on the show today, and she is from Washington, D.C. Yes, and she has an organization called Shower with Love. Yes. Very exciting. Very exciting. Absolutely. Shower with Love is, yeah, it's an organization that she started, and it's really cool because the show today is all about... Acts of kindness. Yes, it's about acts of kindness, you guys. It touched my heart. It actually got me thinking in so many different ways. And Yeah, me too. Yeah. And so the other thing that got me thinking when I got the news on that Sunday that Kobe's plane had mm, crashed. Yes. That, that was a hard blow for so many of us. Yeah. And, and we want to send out just love and positivity to his family and all the families that lost of someone in that. The The crash. crash. Yeah. And what it did for us was it had us to look at our life. Um, We wanted to kind of analyze things and kind of reset because we know that things can happen. And yeah, it and it just makes you want it just brings into focus what's important in life and just to enjoy life while we have it. We just want to tell everyone just to take some time. Love your loved ones. Yeah. and, And if there's little things happening are going on that are petty let it go unless it's just impacting your ability to uh have a stress-free life then you have to make a decision as to what would be best for you for the most part some of the things that we do here in our home is that we like for example every single morning when i'm driving to work yeah, i'll give you i'll give her a call and we'll just talk on the phone catch up on little conversations or just that little something extra before we have to go into work and face all the other stuff we still kind of have that connection going and talking Talk well, about sometimes a there's things that you remember while you're going into yeah, work like yeah. oh you know what happened oh yeah yeah right, right and so you're like i'm like oh yeah okay. oh yeah like did you see that email and like the other thing that's super cool well, we also talk to each other at lunchtime as well. Yeah. Every, when, we, every, when we have the opportunity, we, we get to take lunch at the same time. It's, yeah. You know, it's like every single day. The guys are like, who are you? You know, you're on the phone. Yeah, I'm talking to my wife, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's like I roll solo so that I can spend time with my husband while I'm at lunch. I talk to him and uh, and then after work on my way, my commute home, we're on the right. phone. And then when we get home. We're talking and hanging out with each other some more. We're just sharing with you some of the things that we do and we try to hang out. Yeah, because life is busy. So you just try to find those special moments. Try to find any of the moments that you can just to spend time talking with each other or going for walks, going for hikes, putting together a puzzle, playing some cards, whatever you can just to spend the, so just those moments together mm-hmm. when you can because you know when we're working we're working when we got other things to do we're busy we're busy and sometimes yeah. we just you just never know like what happened with uh kobe so my condolences goes out to all the families yeah. as well kobe did a lot of different acts of kindness off the court yes and that would showed in all all the people that showed their love and support uh, for him and his family and all the other families uh, with murals and all the flowers, kindness and condolences to the families. Yeah, that was so amazing. Like there was murals. Like One of my coworkers showed me they did something in like Australia and a couple of other places. And like I say, so he made a big impact all over the world. All of us can make an impact, maybe not all over the world, but to those people that we do touch, those people that do know us. Or that we, in the future, that we're going to reach out to and touch. Sometimes we can make an impact. Yeah, that's so true. Sometimes you may not know them at all. Like our guest today, she has no idea who the people are that she's doing these acts of kindness for. Mm -hmm. I found that that was amazing because she seen a situation that was happening and she felt touched by it. And she she moved into action. Yeah, she she did something about it. 
Yippee, you get to join me today. So guess what, you guys? We're going to start the show. And guess who's going to come back with us? I'll be back. I'll be back. He'll be back. Here we go. Let's get this show on the road. The top causes of homelessness among families were, number one, lack of affordable housing, two, unemployment, three, poverty, and four, low wages, in that order. The same report found that the top five causes of homelessness among unaccompanied individuals were, number one, lack of affordable housing, two, unemployment, three, poverty, four, mental illness and the lack of needed services, and number five, substance abuse and the lack of needed services. We have a very special guest in the house. We have Kashmir joining us today from Showering with Love. Hi, Kashmir. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hi, guys. I invited you on because I wanted you to share about your journey to coming to Shower with Love. Shower with Love started December 29th of 2018. We've been going strong for a little over a year now. But Shower with Love provides hygiene services to the homeless communities here in the Washington, D.C. area. So far, we've done of four drives, um, hot donation drives so far within the Washington, D.C. area. What is the donation drive about? So a donation drive is we start by asking for donations, monetary, toiletry items, whatever, you know, one can donate. And we gather those items and we, you know, pass them out to the homeless communities in the parks or we've been to a shelter wherever we decide to go that's where we hand them out at so if someone wanted to donate that was in a different state what would they do in order to help to donate so i have a a paypal account um i have cash app they could mail items to my address i can provide them with an address if if they're close to my area we can meet up what was it that sparked your interest in in starting shower with love so shower with love my ultimate goal is to provide a a mobile shower trailer to provide showering services to the homeless communities i was on facebook one day and i saw those same services with another nonprofit out in Atlanta. And I was like, wow, like, you know, the Washington DC area, they don't have those types of services. And some of the homeless people, you know, they they choose not to go to shelters or to go and get those services because of, you know, the unsafe environments in the shelters, you know, they don't feel safe. They've All types of things happen in these shelters. So they'll sit outside and you know they need that in the washington dc area so my ultimate goal is to um provide the mobile showering service that is really nice it touches my heart i think that that is such a beautiful thing nowadays it's tough it's tough and like tough and and it's crazy because you know you never know what someone may be going through you know what put them in those situations People like myself and other organizations, it's good that we're out there, that we're listening, you know, that we're providing these services to make these these people feel human again, you know, because sometimes they may feel like people don't care about them. They're losing life in society because the government is just throwing them out there and just doesn't care. So my ultimate goal is to provide those services so that can at least help. I know that we will never be able to end homelessness, but we can decrease it. I want to share something with you. One day I was watching TV and something had happened someplace else in the world where I can't recall exactly what it was, but it was where they actually had opened it up where people could give donations like money in a matter of six hours it was over a million dollars and this was for something that was out of the country and as i was Mm -hmm. sitting there i thought to myself wow here at home in the united Mm -hmm. states we have so many people that are homeless 
and so mm-hmm. many people that need. And I thought, mm-hmm. I wonder how it would be if we did drives and collections for the people that we have right here that live in the United States. And I'm not opposed to us helping people that are abroad and, and them doing mm-hmm. the televised tel- uh, telethons. Or, But I was just kind of like, hmm, I see people almost every day when I'm on my way home from work. But I often wonder how would it be if we were able to do something like raise more money and put them in apartments. And you know, it honestly, it it really could, it, it really can be done. It's just that you know, the government that which we stand, you know, they 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 choose to not want to want that responsibility, so to speak. We have the money here in America. It's just that can't speak for the government but it's it's we have the money and you know it's just Mm -hmm. yeah when I I was working I still work in DC but at that particular time when I had started um I would walk past them every day every day and it was just crazy how we're in the nation's capital we're not too far from the White House you know oh wow and it's just yeah literally it was just People would walk past them and, you know, with their nose turned up and it, it bothered me. So I said, you know what, kind of gave me the the idea of starting this, this my nonprofit and wanting to help them. I think what it is, I used to live in California and when I would mm-hmm. go downtown, a lot of people would say, don't go over there. It's called Skid Road. And the people are homeless. And they're homeless because a lot of them got on drugs. And mm-hmm. then they're no longer able to work or, or be in society because of that reason. And so I think there's a stigma associated mm-hmm. sometimes with mm-hmm. people who are homeless for whatever the reason they are. Sometimes people think it has to do with them being on drugs. Yes. That but is so true, and you know when I uh, when I was doing um, my donation drive at the shelter, and I was outside talking to a few of the guys that stays in the shelter, they were like, you know, they work, but they stay in the shelter because stuff is so expensive out here; it's not affordable, and especially in the Washington D.C. area, stuff is extremely expensive. It's mm-hmm. it's like two thousand dollars for one bedroom who can afford that wow it's crazy a lot of people they 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 can't afford it it's not always being on drugs or having a a mental disability or whatever they they just can't afford it i feel like even if it was a mental disability i would love to see help being provided for those people as well where they can get in there and get the medications that they need and Mm -hmm. be able to get back into society or either be able to be supported through an apartment complex being built that's safe absolutely where they can live and and be able Mm -hmm. to you know get back into society in that way right yeah i agree Yeah, you know what happened? Uh, The reason why this, when I seen Shower with Love, it just really touches my heart. And when I seen the page, I almost teared up because of, from gratitude. I felt so grateful that I appreciate that there's people like you that exist because it's, it's that the acts of kindness, it's the caring Mm -hmm. and just, and, and doing all of that. That's what helps to some ways to make our country a great country to live in and it inspired me to want to do more myself you know and so I'm starting Mm -hmm. with having you on to because maybe someone will hear it that's been wanting to do something similar and you guys could network Mm -hmm. it also touched my heart Kashmir because when I was a kid a lot of people don't know this but we went through a lot and we had became homeless Mm -hmm. ourselves at one point Mm -hmm. and we had to live with uh like go to different friends house Mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. stay and and I felt as a kid I was embarrassed yeah I was embarrassed that my friend Dawn and her mom was dropping us off and we were Mm -hmm. literally in the process with the sheriff or the police there and they were saying we Mm -hmm. had 
we had like five or 10 minutes to get the certain things and we had to leave. Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to have no place to go. We were in our car as kids Mm -hmm. and she was able to find a friend who allowed us to go there in the evening time to sleep. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was really tough. And I I knew that as a child growing up that I, I always felt like I wanted to always make sure that I at least had a a roof over my head and a place to live because it it was not very comfortable at all. And I was a kid and we went through that. And Mm -hmm. we also were in a couple Mm -hmm. of other situations growing up where we we had to accept those situations because we didn't have anything well my mother felt at the time that she had no choice and and one of them was an abusive relationship and the the -hmm. alternative she thought was for us to become homeless so it touches my heart it's near and dear to me I go to work every day but I know that we are all the majority of the people I know we're no more than a couple paychecks away I say that all the time, you know, we are a check away from being in that same situation. So we we need to do what we got to do so that we, we won't be in that situation. But to piggyback off of what you said about being young and being homeless, I remember a time where, you know, we had got evicted. And it was so crazy because I was young. Being young, it was like, you know, stay in a child's place. You don't ask any questions. Yes, this absolutely. I'm old enough to know, to have known what was going on, but I couldn't question what was going on because I was too young to be an adult's business. But we were blessed enough to have slept on our grandmother's floor or whatever, but it was just like, why are we here? Like, we we had the money, you know, it, it, it was just mind-blowing. And we, we stayed there for a couple of months, but it was just... You know, I want my own. What's going on? I, yes. I, you know, you know, so yeah, definitely. We actually went through it a few times throughout our life. One of them, we lived in the Midwest and my mother over the phone, they would love her. They would say, come on in. Yes, we're interested. Mm -hmm. We'll hire you. The position's Mm -hmm. open. You're going to talk with such and such. But when she would get there, she was blocked so many times from getting a job. Very educated Mm -hmm. woman. We were able to get into some sort of a housing low income program when she would she was Mm -hmm. in school she finished college when she would get a job then they would raise her rent up immediately to where it was Mm -hmm. like she couldn't even afford it with the three kids Mm -hmm. she had plus Mm -hmm. she was also raising a cousin of mine and so it was Mm -hmm. they they made it where it was almost at that time impossible for her to succeed so she finally packed everything up and sold everything she had because we had went there to take care of her father. And then we ended up in Cali right away. She was able to get her a good job and make good money. So it depends sometimes for some of us, like where we live. I don't know how it is today. It's 2020. But back then, this is in the 80s and it was very prejudiced. We went through a lot. So that's why I'm super empathetic to people who are homeless and I don't judge. I don't see them and say, oh, look at them and just assume Mm -hmm. that it's all the same reason. Mm -hmm. I see veterans, too. And that's disturbing. These people served our country. Oh, yes. That really bothers me because it's like, you know, they should have they should be number one priority. I don't understand how they go and fight for our country. And it's like when they come back. You know, they don't have any resources. That's crazy. It's like, okay, okay, you did your job. You come back and it's it's nothing. No reward, nowhere to live, no no nothing for them. I think there should be several apartment complexes Mm -hmm. in every major city. And when there's veterans that are injured because they were in the military and something happened like PTSD, or just anything where they have that ability to live in those apartments to make it affordable. You know, it may be, if if we can't say that, you know, it hasn't been a thought, but a thought and action are two different things. Mm -hmm. So rather they, they don't want to do it because they have the money. I think that that definitely should be something that's high on the list. Last year, they showed this like a, a segment on, Mm -hmm. The homeless rates in California. 
-hmm. and they were showing how yes they were showing in Mm -hmm. san diego area how not san diego Mm -hmm. san francisco it's so high that the people Mm -hmm. who normally go there for these uh conferences like business related conferences decided Mm -hmm. not to go that year because i think that they were disturbed from seeing this there was all the tents and my father lives in Cali and he was telling me that the rents Mm -hmm, are mm -hmm. so high that families that if one loses their job it puts them in a situation where the family becomes homeless Homeless. so there's different Mm -hmm. it it is so true that it's not only for one specific reason and DC is like number two or three on the list but it's it's mind-blowing here in DC because we're next to the White House, you know, the Capitol, the Monument, you know, all of these historic locations. And Where people go to people visit. The tent. Yes, all the time, day in and day out. People in government, they don't care. You would think that they could at least clean up around that area and, and, and build a shelter or something, a safe yeah. one. I mean, or, they or may some... have these shelters, but like I said... A lot of them, they choose not to go to these shelters because so much that happens in these shelters that we don't even know about. And we won't know until someone that actually stays there opens up, you know, tells someone about this one lady. She was saying that um, she I think that was her first night staying in the shelter. And when she woke up, her stuff was gone. You know, someone stole her stuff. So it's like, you know, you have these shelters. They're not safe for these folks to stay in they need I to think figure if they out how had to make these it shelters safe. or had these apartments so to speak or rooms they should have their own like personal space not just a bunk bed they, they need their own personal space and it should be some type of transition not just to stay there and you're, you're just there you need that there, there need to be a transitional process so when people are coming like from other countries and they're visiting the White House or even just mm-hmm. me as a tourist, I would have to go through the area. Mm-hmm. And, you know, are you familiar with Union Station? No, not at all. I've never even been okay. to the uh, Washington, D.C. I'm visualizing it through your description. Yeah, so no, Union Station is it's a historical mall. And it's near, it's a couple of blocks from the Capitol and the White House and the Monument. But a lot of people come to that mall. One, they have, that's where Amtrak is. They have a lot of traffic in and out. And there's a lot of homeless people that sleeps on those benches out there. It's a bridge that's near there, the K Street Bridge, where just recently... They had like a bridge sweep because the people in the area were saying that, you know, they were tired of looking at them, polluting the area. It was a lot going on. So they did a a sweep and they evicted the people. So it's like, okay, once you evict these people, where do they go? What happens? They find somewhere else to sleep. So what did they do? But that's all they care about. They, you know, they don't of putting them somewhere they just don't want them on the streets where people travel back and forth from and to hope that there's some sort of a resolution that could be put in place to really help with that i truly hope so and uh, you know a lot of those people that were forcefully moved they didn't have anywhere else to go so once everything settled down they put their tents back under the bridge because that's all they know if mm-hmm. you don't know, if that's all you know, it's like, I don't know where else to go because that, that, you know, that's all I know. Yeah, that just really touches my heart. I could like put together a box and I can mm-hmm. be, I can actually send it to you to help out with the organization. That would be so great. You about to have me crying over here. <laughs> I'm going to do that. Oh my God. Yeah, because I feel like what you're doing is something that is awesome. And you're about to have me crying over here. Just when I seen your page and what you stand for, what you do. When I tell you honestly that it really touched my heart, I it really did. And I thought, wow, this is amazing. Acts of kindness is something that people do. And sometimes they're not always given a platform to share Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. or the recognition 
that they deserve, which is thank you so much for your service. People don't only have to wear a uniform to be considered as like someone that provides a service. Absolutely. What I want to ask now is if you could give us all of the information of where I and anyone else that's out there listening can send items to you or donate to the cause, where can they send either money? Can they send items? For me, it's going to be some items that I... Social media pages, shower with love. My cash app is dollar sign cashmere cooper. My PayPal is cashmere.cooper at yahoo.com. I don't have a P.O. box as of right now, so if someone wants to mail me something, I will have to privately give them an address, toiletry items. Can you spell it out in case? Sure, K-A- sure. K-A-S-H-M-E-R-E. Do you have a Facebook yes, page? I do. So everything is Shower With Love on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so much for coming on the show today and for sharing with us what you do. I just want to say thank you for thinking of Shower With Love. I just want to get my organization out there so that I can people can hear uh, what Shower With Love is all about. Yeah, so what did you think of her organization? I think it's wonderful things she's doing. I, I think so, too. I haven't heard of that before, so it was really the first time I've ever heard of someone having a service where you provide uh, showers for homeless people. Right. Yeah, so I thought and, that that was definitely worthy to be noted as an act of kindness. Yes, most definitely. And we could get on a whole nother subject about homeless. And I like that point out that how y'all talked about how people are homeless for so many different situations and that we shouldn't judge them. And assume that they're all, right. um, that everyone has the exact same situation. Right. And, and I've helped uh, homeless as well and found out they're in all, all kind of different situations in all different ages. Yeah, exactly. And the truth is that it could happen to anybody. That's true. You know, all it takes is uh, an illness or... uh, Lost job, a number of... Different things. Layoff. So the next time you guys are out there and you have an opportunity to help an organization, please do so. It's It helps them so much. And try and look up Shower With Love. She's on Instagram. She's on Facebook. All of her information was provided. You guys can reach out to her and touch bases to ask additional questions if you have any. She'll definitely be available to answer your questions and to let you know any additional information that is needed. Great. Well, I want to say thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It was my pleasure. I always enjoy spending time with you. Oh, that's so nice. Do you want to come back? I'll be back. When? When do you want to come back? Whenever you need me. Oh, you want to come back (laughs) next week? Maybe not next week. I think I'm busy. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, before we go, we I did want to share that. You know what we missed? This is Black History Month. Yes, February Black History Month. Also, don't forget, it's leap year. So you get a whole extra day. Wow, a whole extra day. Do we have to work on that day? Well, it's Saturday, so I don't... I don't know. Some people have to work. Yes, yes. But so you that, do get five Saturdays this um, for February. Yay. Yeah, so that's nice. That's something to celebrate. Five you know, Saturdays. You know, back in my day, <laughs> <laughs> there used to be a tradition where on leap year, the, uh, the girls would ask the guy out. So, if you want to ask me on a date... Okay, you know, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you. All right, I think I will. I'll go ahead and do that. So, this okay. is the time that... You just know. thought I'd get that in, just let you just in case you forgot. All right. Yes. You know what? I think I'll do that. Okay. I, I can't do it right now because you're expecting it. So we'll I'll surprise you. I think it has to be in February though. Oh, you know what else? <laughs> yeah, it will be in February. You know? Well, I'm sure if I forget you you got me. You're gonna ask me out to go on a date. Oh, definitely. Yeah, when you Maybe guys are tomorrow married. even. Right. When you guys are married, you still get to date, you know. That's yes. what keeps gotta it, make that time. That's what keeps it alive. Every act of kindness is a piece of love we leave behind. Kindness is more than deeds, it is an attitude. 
an expression, a look, a touch. It is anything that lifts another person. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm Shantae with Authentic Talks.